What's the word, y'all? I'm gonna be honest with you. I've changed up the way I watch NBA games, man. I, I became a victim of watching so much that you watching nothing at all. And that's a, that's a real thing. I have up six different games and then you ask me, oh, who is doing what? And I couldn't really tell you because I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, and I'm here. And today um, is the day I decided to do things a little bit differently, especially with the crazy slate that we got. I think there were seven or eight games that started exactly at seven o'clock central time, which NBA, by the way, what the hell are we doing? Like, we just saw on election day how great it was to give us those 15-minute intervals. I mean, maybe because this was already planned. We need more of those 15-minute intervals because it just makes it so much easier to watch the last couple minutes. I mean, a lot of these games came down to the wire. Washington versus um, uh, Miami, Atlanta, Houston, Brooklyn, Indiana, Ch Chicago, OKC. These games started at the same time. Portland, New York, they started at the same time. And all of them were, like, down to the last couple possessions. If we start 15 minutes in between, boom, I watch the end of this one. Then I go to the end of this one. Anyway, um, so I'm letting you know that up top now, and I'll probably remind you throughout the course of the season, because I'm, I'm making a selection of, of a, a few games a night, some of these games got literally zero PT for me. And we just gonna have to accept this. I'm gonna try my hardest to rotate and not just pick my favorite teams to watch and try to do my due diligence. Today, a lot of games I didn't get to, but let's talk about the games that I did. Starting off with the Boston Celtics, man. Uh, they went on a 30-something, 30, 38-39 to 4 run at the end of the third quarter, early into the fourth. I'm also dropping shorts on this channel now um, that are like recaps, but less in-depth, obviously, because it's less than one minute. Go show some love to the short that was dropped a little while ago. I, I talked about this a little bit. But right now, it doesn't seem like there's a team in basketball that can really mess with the Boston Celtics other than the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> two and one on the season, baby. Two and one on the season. It is very funny that they have four losses and two of them are against the Bulls and the Bulls in the last week have lost to the Orlando Magic and the OKC Thunder. I, that, this is why we love the NBA. It's very, very unpredictable. But today they played against the Sacramento Kings. Um, this is the number one offense versus the number two offense in basketball going head to head. And I mentioned that run that the Boston Celtics went on. It was low key crazy. Because you, I told you those numbers is like 38 to 4 run. I don't know the exact number. It feels like that. And you would expect a run like that to be driven by uh, Jalen Brown. Maybe Marcus Smart, Malcolm Brogdon. Let's just say the better players on the roster. Nah. You know, Jason Tatum was on the court. But it was Sam Hauser, Luke Cornett, Peyton Pritchard. And they gave a lot of love to Peyton Pritchard after this game. Saying that when they need energy, when they need some spark, Peyton Pritchard is the guy. And he's been exactly that. And this is their kind of revenge tour right now man they they look unmess -wittable under a lot of a lot of circumstances and to go on a run like this against an opposing nba team is low-key crazy and i keep having to remind people things are going to get better for them because rob is coming back we just got a report like two days ago that rob is scheduled to come back before christmas ladies and gentlemen that's like a month away almost to the to the to the minute and once he comes back, given that he's completely healthy or he'll eventually work his way into complete health, this team that already is the number one offense in the history of basketball is also about to get that defense revamped. And, and, and people are talking about the defense is 17th of basketball, whatever. And the last two weeks when they are 6-1 and one again, only lost one game against the Bulls, they have the seventh best defense in that span. So though Rob is not there and the numbers over the season say they're 17th, they're ramping it up right now. And I just mentioned they went against the number two offense in basketball and put the clamps on them. And the, the Sacramento Kings went on some runs for sure. Ultimately, we, we have a team um, that was relying heavily or has relied heavily on Kevin Herter to make shots. He was 0 for 6 tonight. We're, we're not going to get 0 for 6 from 3 from Kevin Herter often this season. Um, the beam is not being lit, but the Boston Celtics are just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I mentioned in the video before that the Sacramento Kings are my favorite offensive team to watch just because they do so many dribble handoffs. Everybody's moving off the ball, on the ball. It's just so much. It's, it's like you would think that this team has been playing together offensively for a very long time. At least until we get to the fourth quarter, a lot of time things get stagnant, and that's how you almost blow the game to the Grizzlies. I said almost. You still win that way. Sometimes down the stretch, uh, things get fumbled, but I think that's kind of the case with most NBA teams, and this is a relatively young team as far as continuity goes, so I'm going to give them a pass. So the, the Kings have been my number one offense to watch 
I mean, the Boston Celtics are very close too. Like I mentioned, they are the number one offense in the history of basketball, at least up until this point. And they do very similar things as far as motion goes. Don't ask me about sets. I don't I don't know what sets go on in the NBA basketball. I just know that like Peyton Pritchard will be screening for some for Al Horford. There, nobody is immune to setting the screen, and that's resulting, and I think the number was 55% of their shots being wide open or open to wide open. They generate a lot of good looks, and they're hitting their shots at a crazy, crazy clip. And I'm easily swayed. Absolutely. I'm an easily swayed person. Um, like a month into free agency, I was like, oh, my team this season is going to come out the East is the 76. I thought they had an amazing offseason. And then I started to really think about Giannis. I was like, oh, the Milwaukee Bucks are going to be my team to come out the East. And now that we hear almost 20 games into it, the, the Celtics might do that again. Like I said, I'm easily swayed. So next week, I mean, Giannis just almost put up 40 against a really good defensive team. I'm saying right now it's the Boston Celtics. Check back with me in a few weeks. Let's talk about some of these other games. Um, the the Lamelo list, Gordon Hayward list, Dennis Smith Jr. list. A lot of people are missing in this game versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. They pull out with a big victory. Kai Jones. Um, I, I want to talk. I wanted to talk about Kai Jones over the last week or so. If you notice, I ain't really uploaded like that. When he's been given minutes, he has been such a spark. Obviously, you probably seen some highlights of him throwing down a reverse dunk in transition, but it's a lot more than just throwing out some highlights. He's playing really good defense. He's running the floor, and I'm hoping that with the Charlotte Hornets continuing to look bad again, they went tonight. Shout out to him. Them looking bad and Gordon Hayward, Hayward being out indefinitely again. Um, that they'll sell some of these higher pieces and let these younger dudes play because Kai Jones deserves real NBA minutes, at least on the team like the Charlotte Hornets. Cat really struggled. One, one from 11 from three. It got to the point where he was, he shot one and his whole body language changed again. Not a very pretty win for the, a uh, pretty game for the Minnesota Timberwolves, especially like I mentioned, a lot of people missing on the Charlotte Hornets. They're coming off a five game win streak. So we knew it wasn't going to last forever, but this is a game they definitely, definitely should have won. In the fourth quarter of Brooklyn Nets versus Indiana Pacers, the Brooklyn Nets had a total of eight made field goals, all eight of which came from the hands of Kevin Durant. Nobody else in the quarter, fourth quarter for the Brooklyn Nets scored a field goal. Now, we did get some free throws from Ben Simmons, two for two, by the way, perfect from the field today. And uh, Kyrie Irvin also hit a free throw, but it was really all Kevin Durant. And you could tell he really, really wanted to win this game because he was coming down court like, I am Kevin Durant and I'm going to do what I got to do. But ultimately, I mean, Benedict Matherin in the fourth quarter, 16 points. Tyrese Halliburton had a 15 assist game, zero turnovers. It's insane. I mean, again, I mentioned the Indiana Pacers a couple days ago. They're playing a beautiful brand of basketball, a fun brand of basketball, where they had 20 points off the bench of Ben. They had 20 and 15 from Tyrese Halliburton, 23 from Miles, and 26 from Buddy. Like, that's good team basketball, and it's easy to play team basketball when you're starting point guard to give you 15 assists and zero turnovers. We're going to talk about the Brooklyn Nets. I'm going to give them a little bit more time, but they was looking really, really good. And I don't know if it's you to, you to being injured or the reacclimation of other pieces. I don't know. But these last couple games have not been pretty whatsoever. I kind of forgot that they beat the, um, the Raptors the other day. That was an okay win. But, like, I'm thinking about Philly and then this one. Either way, I made a tweet. And this is no disrespect to this guy um, because I don't I don't know him. But my tweet was like, what does John Collins do? Uh, I watched this game. I, he played 33 minutes. He ended with eight points, two for seven from the field. His three-point shot is completely gone. Remember when John Collins legit was a pick-and-pop threat? That ain't the case any longer, man. Let me look at his real season numbers are. He's shooting 23% from three this season on pretty much the same volume as the last three years. Literally, he is averaging 3.3 three-point attempts a game for the last three seasons. It's eerie. Um, but the three-point shot has completely fallen off a cliff, and he feels like he is stuck in the middle. Not even the middle, the outside. Because he, he just kind of exists. Since DeJounte and Trey Young are trying to acclimate themselves, and they've been doing an okay job at that, even though today was a horrible, horrible loss. So we can talk about that. John Collis' role is kind of up in the air, and that's how you get to the point where he's still being talked about in trade talks. I just don't – his his salary is 23.5 this year, 25.3 the next year, 26.6, and then 26.6 again, which is a player option. That is a huge contract for what John Collins has been. But I – I mean – you know, we've had seasons where John Collins was worth this kind of money. He's only 25 at this point. And I'm trying to figure out if he's lost in the shuffle. Is he completely disengaged? Or is he just not good? 
it's, 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 I don't think he's bad. I think he's, I mean, they always talk about, oh, um, he was really upset with his name being in trade talks. Sean, it's been three seasons, man. At some point, you just got to accept it and ball out. Maybe, maybe if you just balled out, you, you wouldn't be in the trade talks all the time. This has to be the season, right? This has to be the season where he gets moved. I don't see a scenario where he stays on this roster. I just, it just, it has not worked for them or for him. And I think it'd be better for both sides if they, you know, divvied it up. Kenny, what trade are you thinking about? I ain't him. I ain't that guy to do that type of stuff. I don't know. I see a lot of Suns fans advocating for a John Collins trade, which could be interesting. I mean, if you if you need somebody to get the most out of somebody, Chris Paul could do that. Even though he's old and not really playing basketball much anymore, Chris Paul could do that. But you got 44 from Trey Young and 39 for DeJounte and loss because they got out-rebounded by him. Actually, there's a tweet that I screenshotted. They blew a 16-point lead in the second half. They missed six free throws in the fourth quarter. They had only four made field goals in the fourth quarter. Even though they're playing without Clint Capella, they got out-rebounded by 31 and gave up 37 second-chance points to, again, the Houston Rockets. Shout out to them. I, you know, I be feeling bad because any anytime the Houston Rockets win a game, it's not about them winning. It's about the other team being bad and losing. You know what I'm saying? But it's just the nature of them being the 30th ranked team in basketball and the nature of them being one of the youngest teams in basketball that, like, when you lose to this team, is objectively going to look bad, especially if you're up by 16 in the third quarter. I mean, things got chippy. DeJounte Murray's talking trash to Bruno Fernando, saying he's too small. And guess who got the last laugh? Fernando. I didn't realize that Kenyon Martin had 15 rebounds. I mean, that, that goes to that rebound portion, huh? 15 rebounds for Kenyon Martin Jr. Remember he wanted to be traded? That was a fun time because Bulls fans were mocking up trades, and I was excited potentially to get him on the roster. It, obviously, it hasn't happened, but it might. Probably not, though. Bulls are still the most confusing team in basketball where they will beat the Milwaukee Bucks and beat the the boston celtics and then lose to the okc thunder um but i mean when your best players shoot nine for 23 and then 20 or 12 for 27 you're usually not going to win those games and the bulls obviously don't shoot three pointers but the okc thunder don't either and they won. shea is different we all knew that i mean these other games i'll probably just like pick the possessions of steph curry and clay thompson to see how they did they thing bam put up 38 i gotta watch a bam 38 piece you know bam is one of my guys Oh, and Jeremy Grant and Anthony Simons combined for, what, 82 points or something like that? They were absolutely insane. I only watched, like, half of the fourth quarter in overtime of that. Um, he put up 28 free throw attempts. 28. Insane. Hey, show some love to the to the YouTube shorts. I'm trying to continue to grow the channel, obviously. And I'm, I'm kind of late to the shorts slash TikTok world. Uh, but I'm finally here. So hopefully y'all welcome me with uh with open arms and y'all show support. Basically, it's just a shorter version of this with less an an, an analysis and just talking about what happened. Okay.